just thinking. All right. Okay. Welcome back, guys. It's been a while since I've actually given a lesson, uh, since I was out during most of the summer, a little bit of summer school, but but not a lot. So hopefully you guys are here. Um, why don't you put in the chat just real quick if this is your first time to uh, Utah Virtual Academy, just so I know where, how in detail I need to go. Me? No. Okay. No, no. It's your first time. Okay. So it looks like we got a mix, a little bit of some that have been here, some that have just started. Okay. All right, so those that have started um, that this is they've done before, they probably understand how this goes. Um, my classes are all set up the same. I teach quite a few classes. Uh, and so you'll probably have me for like personal finance if you're gonna do like uh, the criminal justice pathway, if you wanna do driver's ed here, uh, that's all me, okay? So you might have me a, a little bit. Okay, so this is geography. Um, couple things here. Uh, I do have expectations, right? Make sure you're just kind of following along with the Nearpod lesson. Uh, make sure you're listening and you kind of participate um, as you can throughout the recording. Okay, a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Mr. Hancock. I have uh, three little kids. They're getting older. My oldest is going into sixth grade now, and she's actually taking. Um, online classes, <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm excited she likes that. But there's my wife, Christy. She's actually teaching um, first grade for Utah Virtual Academy too. So our whole family's in there. Okay, so real quick, just so I kind of know a little bit about you, if you are on the Nearpod, uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself, right? Uh, where do you live? What year in school you are? I be in geography. I mean, I could have anywhere from ninth to twelfth grade. So this kind of gives me a little bit about you. Um, do I have any pets? Yep, I got. A, I have a dog. It's a Bernie Doodle. She's big. She's really big, actually. Um, yeah, one of these days I'll have to, like show you a picture or something, and then. We do have a cat that runs around, but I hardly ever see it. It's like a mystery sometimes. And maybe you want to tell me a little bit about yourself, like if you have a pet. But that'll give me some good information. And if you can't do it on the Nearpod or not on there, let me throw the Nearpod chat in one more time into... Thing if you want to join us there. You have two cats. Very good. Four dogs. Woo. Yeah, I, I have a hard time with just one dog. It's uh takes a little bit of time. All right. Cool. Well, if you need to, you can always go back and go back into this and put it there. You're getting a snake. What kind of snake? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, we're not going to go over this. This is just for those that are they're kind of following along. But I'm going to jump into it for the course just so you can kind of get a little orientation. So what we're doing this year is every teacher should be posting on the announcements um, what's going on this week. Uh, so if you look right here, we have live class at 1130. If you can't hit live class, you have a class recording you can catch right there. This week, what's going to be assigned, we're going to assign, I have a pre-test that I need you to do, and then the lesson one quiz. And I'm giving you guys until Friday to get those done. And then what I do is I grade over the weekend, and then Monday, you'll have kind of updated grades there. So that's kind of, I, I'll post these here, I'll also post the recordings, that kind of stuff. So you'll have um, plenty of stuff to see here. If you go into plan, so click right here. It's going to pull up, pull up a calendar real quick for you. Uh, live class, you see, on Mondays. We will have some no school. And then on those weeks, I'll just send out recordings for you to watch. 
there may be some other times that I might be gone or something like that. So, and then the end of the block, oh, I didn't put it in on this one. The end of the block ends, I believe, like the 11th. I'm going to have to go back and look at it. I had it in the, the beginning of the announcements here. It ends the 12th, right? So you need to get everything in by the 12th, okay? All right, so somebody said, uh, can you work ahead in the class? I'm more than happy if you want to work ahead, right? I'm, I think online classes, this gives you the flexibility to do, do things. So if you want to go ahead... I do have, um, if you go into content here, you'll see the pre-test that you need to take. And if like, for example, you get done with this and you want to start on unit two natural disasters, you won't get this live class, class, but this is like a previous class I've taught. And you can go and look at that stuff on there, get all that information. If you want to do the Nearpod link, you don't have to do each of these, okay? Like, um, the, the, these aren't aren't required, right? Maybe I should put not required on there. Anyways, for the Nearpod links, okay? But that's just like a resource that you can use because um, some people don't like to listen to the videos. Rather, just go through a Nearpod and go through there. And then we have um, like the lesson two assignment and then so forth, okay? We got reflections all the way up to the post-test. So if you do want to fly... A little bit faster more, more than happy for you to do that right i mean my goal is that you pass the class okay so some some helpful hints um i let you retake the quizzes and redo the assignments okay so if you do not get the score you want to um for example like i'll just tell you my daughter like she failed her first quiz <laughs> and she went in and i had to retake it okay not a big deal we learn from our mistakes right and then you can go as fast as you'd like um, on it, but you just at least need to keep pace with the course, right? Um, so for example, like make sure you just get assignment one. If you want to keep course the uh, pace with the course, you can. If you want to work ahead, free, feel, feel free to do that as well, okay? All right, so just kind of a breakdown. Uh, you need at least 60% to pass. Um, of course, I'd love to get you an an A if you can, but you at least hit that 60% because that's our biggest thing is we want to get a graduation credit here. This is a 0.5 credits towards graduation. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at the different themes of geography to kind of give us an introduction to geography. Um, I don't know if you've uh, watched the video. Let me see if I have it playing here. Um, I don't know if I'm on the right Nearpod lesson. Hold on real quick. I need to uh, check something real quick. I stopped sharing for a bit. Did I mess up? That's what happens when you start a new year is you, uh, you sometimes get confused about what's going on. Oh, dang it. Okay. All right, guys. I apologize. I think I have an updated version of this lesson. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you another link real quick to pop in there. See, we all make mistakes, and it's all right. Okay, so I gave you another Nearpod link. So get off that one you're on and flip into this new one here because I'm like, I knew this looked old. Okay. All right. Looks like a bunch of you guys are jumping in there now. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh, flipping, uh, switching me here. Let me uh, share my screen again for those that maybe are on a phone or something like that. That's the great part about being virtual, right? You can do it however you need to do it. Okay. All right. So one thing, one reason I like geography um, and I like teaching about it is, uh, okay, thanks for letting me know, um, is basically it's the study of the earth and everything in it. Okay. So there's different parts of like cultural geography that we'll, we'll talk about. Um, there's things about, uh, politics. I know that's kind of 
we won't talk a lot of politics. I promise with you. Uh, we're going to talk about population, like population growth. We're going to talk about natural disasters. We're going to talk about all kinds of cool stuff, right? So that's why I like geography so much and, and one of the reasons I wanted to study it. Okay. So um, we already went through that. Okay. All right. I'm not going to play this very long, but this is the most annoying song you'll probably ever hear, right? But it will help you remember how many themes of geography. Okay. One, two, three, four. Five themes of geography. We got five themes of geography. I said five themes of geography. We got five themes of geography. All right. Pretty lame, I know, but. There's five themes of geography, okay? And so that's what we're going to be going over today in class. And for your gamers out there, I'm actually going to correlate it a little bit to, uh, I heard this, is, this isn't the cool thing anymore, but uh, I can't even remember the game now. Fortnite, okay? Some of you may still play Fortnite. Some may not like it, but at least we'll kind of get you a little bit... Uh, way to do it okay so the first theme of geography i'm going to talk about is movement okay uh, movement is we're going to look at how people move from one place to another so like the migration of people we also have the migration of animals you know some of you guys have animals in, in the thing um also there's also a movement of ideas right so ideas move from one place to another uh and also services so like think of like amazon right i order something on amazon and it's shipped to me from wherever it is <coughs> so movement is a big thing of geography that we'll be talking about and we'll be discussing it throughout this class okay so this is how movement relates to like fortnite okay so listen to this guy. I think he does a good job of kind of putting it all together, and hopefully you can remember some of these things. Today okay, we're going to be talking about the five themes of geography. Five themes of geography. The five themes of geography are movement, region, human environment interaction, location, and place. And if you look at that, what does it spell? Mr. Help. Mr. Help. So let's jump right into it. Let's start with number one. The first one is movement. Movement is how goods, people, ideas, anything like that get around the world. Now think about this. When you start a Fortnite game and you are on that island waiting to go, and then you go from that island into the map, um, that is movement. That is you moving or kind of like immigrating to this map to play. It wouldn't necessarily be kind of just running around and moving your character. The video you're watching, how this video gets spread around the internet, that is movement. The fact that you're playing it on a console of some type or even a PC, those things were made somewhere else and those parts and the, the product had to be shipped to you. They put it on a big ship and they bring it to the United States or Europe or Africa or wherever. And Okay. So real quick, provide one example that represents movement as a theme in geography. Okay. I'm going to see what some of you guys put on here for the answers. Or if you can't, you can't put it on there and you're not on there, put it in the chat. Okay. What's one example of movement as a theme of geography? Okay. It looks like we got some answers coming in. Okay. Walking. Somebody put animal migration. Yep. Okay. Couriers moving mail around states. Yep, exactly. There are six units in the class. Speed. Okay. A frog hopping to another area. Okay. Transportation, right? Riding dirt bike, okay. Running, people, people migrating or objects being shipped to and from. Yep. Okay. Very good. So you guys are understanding a little bit of movement, right? And it, it doesn't have to be you physically going somewhere, but it's like ideas, right? As we're 
we're looking at ideas going from one place to another. Okay, the next uh, theme of geography we're going to talk about is region. Regions are parts uh, parts of the world people identify with but don't have boundaries. Okay, so let's kind of listen to um, about how it relates to Fortnite real quick again. And the second one is region. A region is an area with similar characteristics that make it different from other areas. Uh, when you look at a Fortnite map, you can see that there is a desert region, there is a mountainous region, and in the center you have like a kind of hilly wooded region. Those are all different regions because they all have different characteristics that make it similar to that area, but different from the others. The okay, so those are different regions, okay? So for example, if you look at the region of Utah that you live in, because I'm assuming you all live in Utah, you might be traveling somewhere to and broad, but have ties to Utah. Um, what region of Utah do you live in, right? So right now I live, I live in uh, the valley, basically. Um, so I'd say I wouldn't, I don't live really in the mountains, right? But I live kind of in the valley. So let's see what you guys are putting here. Um, or you live like in the desert region or you re live in like southern Utah, which is like a, a southernest region. What region do you live in? Okay. Southern Utah, desert region. Okay. Next to the mountains. Okay. Good. Tooele, surrounded by mountains. Okay. Okay, you live in a region, but do you know what region? <laughs> okay, near mountains, Sandy. I'm kind of near mountains too, but I live kind of in the plains a little bit, right? Like, like Salt Lake, okay. Ogden Mountain region. Okay, so we know that there's different regions. This is kind of breaking up, right? Like you live in like the the desert or flatlands, or you live on the mountains, or you live on the ocean, that there's different regions um, that we can look and associate things with. Okay, the next one that we're going to talk about is pretty interesting. It's called human environment interaction. Okay, it's how humans affect their environment and how the environment affects humans. Um, yeah, there's no oceans in Utah, you're right, but you could live on a lake. I guess, <laughs> but I love the ocean. So I try to visit as often as I can, um, but human environment interactions. Kate. Okay? So like, for example, you know, if you look at these pictures, uh, the, you know, we, we pump oil or get gases or something like that out of the, uh, mine, the earth, right. We dam up different areas to create, uh, um, lakes and reservoirs and everything but then also the environment interacts to us like natural disasters that happen like there's these huge fires that are going on right now in in canada i believe there's a hurricane that's headed towards california there's all kinds of things that are going on okay and that causes flooding and it affects us okay so somebody said mudslides um where are the mudslides happening right now i haven't seen that on the news lately You can let me know, but that's kind of an interesting one. Okay, so let's see how it relates to um, Fortnite. Third is human environment interaction. Human environment interaction is basically how do humans interact with this environment. In Fortnite, it's where you're knocking down that tree to get the wood. Um, that's what we would do in real life. We would knock down trees to get wood to build houses. And again, Imagine you just keep building and building and building and building in Fortnite, you know, they'll just stairway to heaven. And then, of course, my luck is... Um, you fall off. In the real world, human environment interaction can even be the clothes that you wear. If it's hot outside, you wear shorts and t-shirt. If it's cold outside, you put a big jacket on. I mean, if it's freezing cold outside, it does not make sense for you to be wearing a bathing suit or a Speedo or something like that. And if it's really hot and you're in the middle of the desert, it doesn't make sense to be wearing a gigantic, you know, winter jacket.
All right. So what's one way you interact with the environment, right? I thought it was pretty interesting that there too, that it talked about like the clothes we wear, right? The environment interacts with us. Like if it's raining outside, I'm going to have bring like an umbrella and I'm going to bring a, you know, some rain poncho or something like that. Okay. So the environment's interacting with us. So what's some ways that you found that you interact with the environment? Okay. And think about like the, even like the way we build our homes, right? Um, one of the places I like to go a lot is Belize and in Belize, like they build their houses out of concrete because of the hurricanes and the strong winds, right? Here, we don't build out because of earthquakes. Earthquakes or um, concrete doesn't do very great with, uh, with that. If it snows, you wear a heavy coat. Very good, right? The food we eat. Yeah, you know, I, I like how you said the food we eat because unless if we have a lot of movement, right, we can't eat avocados all the time unless they're imported in, right? We eat maybe uh, soup when it's cold, right? Things like that. If it's raining, wear a jacket. It's hot. Wear sunscreen. Yep. Okay. Go and feel so. So you feel like the, you know, you are able to go on a walk because it's a nice temperature, right? Outside, wearing shorts in the summer. Uh, if you drink hot cocoa in winter, yep. To grow gardens, right? It depends. You can't grow a garden in the winter. So you're, you have to like plan around the environment, right? Things you do day to day, plant trees. Okay. Very good. looks like you guys are getting this concept. Appreciate it. Okay. Next one, we're going to talk about location. Okay. That's like where things are. So there's two really types of location we talked about. One's called exact location. So exact locations like latitude, longitude. And in Utah, it's kind of interesting because our addresses are like latitude, longitude, and other places they're not, they have different streets. Um, so like one of my old houses was like 3203 South, 3450 West, right? So it had like an exact kind of location there. Or you could do like latitude and longitude. I don't know how many of you have done like geocaching before where you get coordinates and you try to find like kind of treasure hanging out. Um, that would be using there. The other one's like relative location, right? So it says like, I live five houses down from the Maverick because there's a Maverick everywhere, right? <laughs> or um, if you go to this park and then go two blocks over, right? You're kind of describing to someone where your location is, not necessarily giving them an exact location. So this is how it would relate to, uh, to Fortnite. All right, number four is location. Now location is basically where something is. If you're asking to find something or you wanna know where you're going, location is what you are asking. Now there are two types, there is absolute and there's relative location. Now absolute is an exact location. It could be an address, it can be latitude and longitude. Now in Fortnite, an absolute location might be just the town name, kind of like if you were going to like um, Haunted Hills or Loot Lake or Retail Row, anything like that would be kind of in this point an exact location. If someone was to put a waypoint on the map saying, I want you to go there, that is also an exact location. That would be the equivalent of today saying like a GPS location on your phone or anything like that. The second of the two is relative location. Now relative location is a little bit different. Relative location is a location in relationship to something. Uh, most of the time is a location in relationship to you. When you're playing Fortnite and you see an enemy and you say over there, that is a relative location. That character is over there from you. It's easy to understand. I cannot map over there. I can't do anything because it's not in relationship to me. It's in relationship to your character. Now, relative location is probably the location we use most on a daily basis. So when you hear over there, next to this, next to that, behind you, those are all relatives. When you're using a GPS and you hear your GPS saying 400 feet, that 400 feet is in relationship to you. You just don't hear GPS to say, turn over there, because that would be crazy. So no. Okay. 
All right. Sorry for you guys that it, that's lagging and stuff. I apologize. All right. So uh, answer this question for those that are on there. Okay. Um, if you were to describe, if I were to describe to you where I live, what type of location would that be? Okay. From what we just talked about when we look at the location. What type of location would that be? Okay, if we look at our little graph here, it looks like the majority of you guys are getting it. If you're not on the Nearpod, um, just put A or B in chat, whichever you think it is. All right. For those that of you that don't know or are still trying to guess here, it would be relative location, right? Because I'm just describing to you where I live. I'm not giving you exact coordinates, right? An address would be exact, but that one be there. Okay. This is the last part of um, last one, last uh, theme of geography is place. So we got to think about what is it like there? So I, I actually love going to other places because I love trying new foods. I love seeing the culture. I love seeing the different environments. Um, so, you know, for example, like here we have, uh, what's this right here? Anybody tell me what type of food that is? Sushi. All right. Where, where, where's sushi from? Where, where would that be? If I already like real authentic okay japan right good okay uh we're in parts of asia okay no different religions you have to act different ways um you know if you're in the middle east and and you were a woman you may have to wear like a a head covering or scarf or something like that um just to respect their religion um depending on where they live you know it might the environment may be different and we'd have to dress differently right and they have different like ways and customs they live housing's a lot different right i mean we're kind of spaced out in utah quite a bit we have really high density yep laws are different the way things work so but what is it like there okay so this last one they'll describe of how that relates to fortnite and number five the last one is place a place is a location with certain characteristics, be it human or physical characteristics, that make it different from others. When we think of Retail Row, kind of looks like a little shopping strip mall area. Um, that place is different than Loot Lake. It is completely different. It doesn't look the same, doesn't have the same physical characteristics. You know, Loot Lake has a huge lake. Um, it doesn't have as many stores. The human characteristics are different. And that's what makes it a place. And that's it. That's all of the five themes of geography. Movement, region, human environment interaction, location, Okay, this is just your preference here, okay? I want to know, what theme of geography interests you the most, okay? Is it movement, region, human environment interaction, location, or place? Okay, let's see what people are saying here. Make it a little bit smaller so I can see everything. Okay, it looks like our winner so far is human environment interaction or location that interests everybody the most. Very good. Okay. All right, so to end everything off here, what you need to do is you have two things. If we look back at our announcement page, we have our, things are going slow today. Okay. Do, do, do. Come on, class announcements pop up. Okay. 
So we have the pretest and lesson one quiz that we need to do. To get to the lesson one quiz, if you just go to and the pretest, you go to content, which will pop up right over here. Right now I'm in unit three. I don't want to be in unit three. Apologize, this is going so slow. Okay. So pretest, you'll find under pretest. So you want to take that. And you only get one shot to take the pretest, but you get just uh, points for just taking it. So don't worry about it. Okay. Don't stress too much, but I want to know what you can what you know already. And then the next one is the lesson one quiz. So that's what you need to do this week by Friday. So if we popped over here. So by Friday, you want to get that done. And then I'll have everything updated, graded. So just to leave you off here, I do have my contact information. If you want to uh, text me or whatever, I got my um, school number here or email me. Email me is usually the best. Sometimes I don't always check my school text and stuff like that. So uh, if you have any questions, please reach out. And uh, if not, we'll see you next week. I'll stay after if you have any questions. I'm going to stop the recording now.